Hey, how's it going, everyone? Justin again, as always. Thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. I hope you're enjoying your Easter weekend. Happy Easter. Today we're going to be talking about airing down and airing up your Jeep when you hit the trail. Most recently, I went on a trail run with SoCal Jeep Club. Got a chance to experience it for the very first time. I knew it was going to be a contributing factor, so I brought with me this Viking tire inflator slash jump pack that we received for free from Eric and the boys over at Harbor Freight. The day following that trail event, I decided I wanted to pick up a little air compressor to make my life a little bit easier and to make airing up a little bit faster. Now there's a couple of ways that you can make airing down a little bit faster outside of just using a tire gauge to release pressure. One of the other ways that you can do so by using a pin or some kind of miniature pocket flathead if you have it will make it a little bit easier and airing it down a little bit quicker. The fastest way to air down really is going to be having a Schrader valve removal tool. I do not have one here. It's at work. But that would be something that you might consider throwing in your Jeep for on the fly. It'll deflate it really fast. You can air it up to that specified uh, PSI that you're looking for when you're getting ready to hit the trail. Other people have a four hose system that connects to all four tires and will actually air down all four tires to their specified value. And when they're ready, they hook all four hoses back up in series and then air them back up to their specified desired value. So for this Jeep, this is the 2021 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon. Okay, tire pressure for this is 37 PSI. Air down pressure on the trail. People were running at 17, some were running at 18. I ran at 20. It was a little bit hard to gauge my tire pressure just deflating it little by little. Seen to me, I was one of the last ones to uh, finish airing down with this little expensive gym that we picked up at the uh, Flying J. I think this thing cost me all of 20 to $27 or something like that. But you know what? It worked. It gave me a rough idea of what the tire pressure was deflated to, and I was able to adjust accordingly with the Viking Jump Pack slash tire inflator. I did give this a trail rating, okay? Obviously not the best option out there when you're trying to air up or air down but it is an option to say the least and it is very compact and it does cost $89 that's a heck of a lot better than these little tiny compressors I saw over at Harbor Freight that I also saw various members of the group actually using too I could tell you throughout all 37 Jeeps that were at the event one-fourth of us were left filling up our tires and everyone else was gone just to kind of give you an idea so I was actually one of the last 10 Jeeps to leave and that was with this little tiny Viking pack. All right, so questions. Questions was, you must have a built-in power inverter. Yes, there is a 110 or 115 outlet in the back. I will show you a picture down here in the corner that we are gonna plug this into. It is not recommended to use an extension cord. Just use the cord that comes with the little air compressor. We're gonna see if that cord is long enough to go from the center of the Jeep to the actual 115 plug-in in the Jeep. I'm going to be airing down my tires using this digital Matco gauge instead of this little truck stop gauge. I feel like it'll be a little bit faster until I can grab a Schrader valve removal tool from work to stow in the Jeep. Okay, so some of you might be asking the question like, why would you air down if you have four wheel drive? There's a couple reasons really, but here's the more simplistic side. Think of a tennis shoe, okay, walking through snow. You know how it's trunch, 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 and you're bearing yourself. Then think about how watching cartoons when we were younger, how they had these huge tennis rackets underneath their shoe or their boot, and as they're walking on snow, the snowshoes, right? So what do they do? They created a wider footprint which keeps them on top of the snow better. So it's kind of the same exact idea when it comes to airing down your tires. You're taking a narrow tire when it's fully aired up and by deflating it you're widening the tire which makes it less likely to sink in into the dirt. Okay, Because now you have this wide footprint and it'll help you kind of crawl through the dirt and especially over rocks and obstacles. There's also gonna be a lot less jouncing around too. It's gonna to cushion more of the blow. Okay, the steps for operating the Fortress ultra quiet air compressor is this. Make sure this valve is closed, not opened. Okay, it's closed. You open it up, it's gonna air the tires down even further, okay? 
So if you wanted to know how to air down with this, that's how you do it. You connect them both, you bleed it off. That's how we would do it. Okay, but now we have a second step here, which is to make sure that our PSI valve is all the way open or twisted to the left, because we don't want to supply any air just yet. Now we have to open the Jeep and connect our 115 or 110 power cord, and we'll see if it has enough extension cord to reach. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we have enough extension cord now. And back here, you'll see that we have our 115 inverter. We're also gonna wanna start the Jeep for this process. So let me get inside here. Now for this, it should show us our tire pressure as well. Okay, so after a moment of actually letting the vehicle recalibrate, you'll see that we are at 18 PSI. Now, we're gonna see if the extension cord is just long enough to power this sucker on. Oh, we need to get a little bit closer, but that's okay. We have a little room. There we go. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we're all plugged in. And really, it's not all that far away from the Jeep, but it's not super close either. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and flip the valve on. All right, so complete bust. The 2021 JRL UR 115 outlet in the back cannot handle the amount of amperage required to power this air compressor. I will show you a separate video clip of it plugged into the wall where it does power up so you can at least hear how quiet or loud it is but unfortunately the 115 outlet cannot handle the seven amps that this thing is requesting in order to inflict tires so luckily we're here at the house i'll just go ahead and air one up with my tire pressure gauge and i'll air the back one up using the viking compressor jump pack so you guys can see in time how long it takes for me to air up one with a 60 gallon compressor versus the other one with the Viking jump pack. So let's roll it. So we're all done here, that thing's going to continue to run. The next test we're going to do is I'm going to plug in the Fortress air compressor. We're going to hook it up to one tire. I'm going to do my presets and get it ready to set for 37 or 38 PSI. And we will deflate both tires again back down to 18 PSI. And in real time, we'll show you how long it takes between the Viking compressor and the Fortress compressor when you have a power inverter hooked up to your Jeep. Because unfortunately, the 115 power inlet inverter that it has, it's just, it doesn't cover the amount of amps required from the little tiny compressor. So that stinks. That just means we need to buy a power inverter and hook it up to our battery in order to successfully run the Fortress compressor. It is what it is at the end of the day. It's a learning curve. So thank God we had a learning weekend to be able to do this. Let that continue to run and then we'll deflate and start all over.
I know it says don't use an extension cord. Unfortunately, we're just too far away from the wall. So we're going to see how it does anyways. Now I'm going to deflate this one back down. That looks pretty low. Let's check it real quick. It's still running. I'm at 14.3 PSI. So in the same amount of time it took me to fire that up, roll up the hose, grab the extension cord, bring this one closer, deflate this one all the way down to 14.3 PSI. We're still running over here on the Viking. And we're almost there. It just now hit 38 PSI, so give it a second. It should kick off here momentarily. It just kicked off. So now we're going to unplug it and check our pr pressure. Within one PSI. So it got to 39 PSI. All right, so now in real time, we're going to see how long it takes for the fortress to fill up the tire from 14.3 PSI. Then we'll confirm it using our tire gauge. I will tell you it's unfortunate that seven amps is just way too much for the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon diesel edition to handle. I'm not sure why they didn't take that into consideration when it came to the off-road community. If being trail red, you'd think they would have taken that into consideration. Clearly they did not. And 7 amps is just too much for that little inverter inside the Jeep to handle. It'll charge your cell phone. It'll charge your Dr. Dre Beats earphones or Bluetooth. But it will not handle a small compressor like this. So for that, we're going to need a power inverter. So I guess that's the next step is to get a power inverter. But it's a good thing that we found out at home and not on the trail. Am I right? Because then we'd be stuck asking for help. Asking for somebody to help fill our tires up. 
But you just saw me using that Viking jump pack slash tire inflator to air up the one tire. It took what, about six minutes, seven minutes maybe? In that time frame, I was able to roll up the air hose. Three, two. In that time frame, I was able to roll up the air hose. I was able to move this compressor into position. I was able to deflate the tire. It takes a little bit. That's it. I don't feel like it took too much time at all. So now we're going to disconnect. Let's see where we were at. One notch above 30 PSI puts us at. Drum roll, please. 35 PSI. So that's pretty close. So if I wanted to, I could crank her up. Maybe a little bit more. See what happens. I got impatient. 45, too much. So I guess if you want to put it the second or third notch above 30 PSI, maybe keep it on there for a few more seconds and then take it back off. All right, so in conclusion, what are my final thoughts as far as this brief overview of the Fortress air compressor that has two air outlets and that has a two gallon tank and 1.2 horsepower? I can tell you this, it's pretty quiet, first of all. Secondly, really didn't take that much time at all to inflate one of my tires. I felt like it took about the same amount of time that my bigger compressor did in order to pull this tire up to about 38, 39 PSI, which is what we were looking for. So it's relatively quick. The Viking, okay, the Viking, first impressions. On the trail, look, it worked out beautifully. That's why I trail rated it, okay? It was able to handle all four tires from air down to air up in one trip. Plus, we still had a sufficient amount of charge left if we needed to jump start a vehicle. But it does take quite a bit of time. First impressions of the Jeep Power Outlet, 115 outlet that they give you. Not impressed with it, okay? For the t how much money you're spending for one of these things, I would have thought they would have at least given you an 8 to 10 amp circuit to be able to use the 115 from the built-in inverter. Unfortunately, that was not the case. This thing demands 7 amps, this little Fortress 2-gallon compressor, and it was just too much for the Jeep to handle. Now, it doesn't mean that you couldn't hook up a power inverter to your battery, route it underneath the seat, and hook up to it, but isn't it unfortunate that the one they have built into the Jeep did not work out for me i'm saying it's unfortunate it's a bust so for that look jeff's empty entire pocket now we have something else that we have to do to the jeep so stay tuned when we get a power inverter we'll show you how we installed it what we did and where we hit it then we'll come back to this little air compressor hopefully on the trail once we see how it performs so that's all i got for this video guys thanks so much for watching my channel we'll see you next time cheers and this is